All right, everybody, welcome to Community Conversation. Uh, this is Athens Clark County Mayor Kelly Gertz, and I am fortunate to be joined today on the 28th of April 2021 by our two newest members of the Athens Clark County Commission uh, Commissioner for District 6, Jesse Hool, and Commissioner for District 8, Carol Myers. Um, they are no strangers to Athens or to unified government, despite the relative newness of these positions. So today, in about the next half hour, we'll talk a little bit about the paths that brought them to where they are now, uh, their priorities. And in the five months they've now spent, or slightly more than five months in Jesse's case, th their observations uh, about moving from uh, community resident and advocate to the commission seat. So um, welcome, Jesse, and welcome, Carol. Yeah, glad, glad to, to be, be here. here. It's good to see both of you. Um, so as I indicated just now, the, the first thing uh, I'd like to hear, and I'll start with you, Carol, is just what what brought you on your personal path to the decision to run for local elected policymaker? You can do anything with your life, but <laughs> you decided this is the thing. Well, I have done a lot with my life, um, and probably what I've done with my life is is led me to this position and feeling like I could do a good job doing it. Um, I often, when I'm talking about being a commissioner, I refer to a couple of things that make me feel more prepared or, or to ready to be a commissioner. Um, and one would have to be my time I spent at Athens Tech. Uh, so I spent my career there from 1987 to 2015 um, and had a couple of years at UGA before that. But I was over there teaching for most of that time and then was a dean for the last couple of years. And, and I say with all sincerity that if I had not had that experience, I would not feel qualified to be running, uh, to have run for office because it gave me such a truer uh, understanding and experience with the full range of, of communities that make up Athens, Clark County, as well as the surrounding counties as well. Um, and, and so that was really important. Of course, like that comes that desire to sort of give back and be a teacher um, comes from my parents as well, uh, who were both teachers and who both were always sort of giving back to the community. Um, and so I had their roles and examples to look at as well. Um, and so that's just sort of part of who I am, my Catholic background of doing, doing good, helping, uh, giving back was just really an important part of, of like is an important part of who I am. The the other thing I, I'd say that has given me the, uh, made me ready to sort of be a commissioner is my experience working in the community on different issues um, and especially within the government as well. So um, I served on the SPLOS 2005 and 2011 citizen selection committee. Um, and I uh, would always say during those that they was like taking an intense graduate course. There should have been credit there um, because you learn so much about all these different projects that are presented. And because so many of them come from the government, you, you get this little insight into all the departments there. Um, not only did I learn a lot, but I saw I was in a group of 22 people and you would back, that was back in the old days when you got everything in a big gigantic binder. Um, and I would do all my homework, you know, and I come in ready to ask questions. And I saw from my experience there and, and when I was in school and graduate school that I ask questions, I think about things critically. Um, and so that's that was that gave me the confidence, but also gave me the sort of idea that I, I had a skill that not everyone has and that I could use that as commissioner. And finally, the last things I'd say in terms of my like community work, um, I spent a lot of the last couple of years in particular working on um, alternative transportation issues, making our roads safer for people who are walking, for biking, um, and also our commitment to 100% renewable energy. And in fact, I asked my, the group of people with 100% renewable energy initiative uh, probably about two years ago now, I said, hey guys, you know, what do you think about me running for office? Would my work there be as important? And it was really important for me to have their support in that, and that would advance that agenda because that is such a, a key thing for me 
to uh, work on here in my retirement years. Uh, I'll stop there and let Jesse speak a little bit because uh, I could probably go on for quite a while. Thanks, Carol. And I'll say thanks for all of your unpaid hours or probably even weeks of service uh, to the county if you add those hours up. I always think of the folks who are on those SPLOS citizen advisory committees as having probably the fullest view of government activity, given the number of, of projects that are pitched by uh, dozens of departments and then resident groups too. Uh, so Jesse, talk a little bit about kind of what brought you to the determination that being in a policymaker role as opposed to an advocate or activist role um, was was what you wanted to spend your time and energy doing. Yeah, I guess um, I've always felt it's really important to have more ordinary folks taking on these roles. And, um, you know, I mean, as you pointed to, I, I did a lot of activism and advocacy in the community for a long time, a lot of organizing. And I got really nerdy about both the policies that were being, you know, looked at and passed or not passed on the local level and state level, um, but also really nerdy about organizational infrastructure and like nonprofit structures and things like that. And that, I think, gave me both a, a strong familiarity with how the local government is operating, kind of the landscape of the people and the way the policies are made and how it's structured. Uh, but also, you know, meetings. I have a high tolerance for the many meetings we have to sit in and a, a, I think a strong understanding of like parliamentary procedure and things like that. Um, so I, I guess I felt kind of equipped to take on the role. And, you know, usually I prefer to be more in the background. I'm kind of an intensely anxious person. So I, I really like performing, but that involves a lot of channeling it into, you know, 30 minutes or an hour, and then you can run away after. And there's a lot less running away after now. There's not so much of an after <laughs> anywhere in Athens. Um, so I was, you know, really hoping that we might get just kind of someone to run. And after a while, it, it seemed like if there was going to be someone, it was going to going to be me to try to bring, I guess, like a fresher uh, perspective with more of a sense of immediacy. Um, and, and that's a lot of what guides me, I think, is this idea that there there's a real sense of immediacy for changes on kind of a grander scale. And so what can we do locally that works toward that? I mean, obviously, we can't just totally transform everything uh, with our, our limited scale and scope here in Clark County, but I think we can do a lot. Um, and so some of those are like old and deep issues around inequality and, and you know, racial injustice and economic injustice. And some of them are newer and fairly dire, just came out of that uh, clean and renewable town hall, you know, talking about climate change, I think is a, a newer problem for the species and very new for us really reckoning with it and, and also very dire in terms of how quickly we need to respond. And then I think there's some things that really show the intersection, like our approach to the justice system and specifically around prison and incarceration. Um, and so I think a lot of what's really made me want to be here is feeling like I have the inclination and uh, capacity, I guess, to try to affect some of those changes uh, and to keep pushing for them because it, it takes a lot of time and energy, you know, like, uh, so, so I, I'm kind of uniquely situated also, I guess, to treat it like a full-time job, even though it doesn't pay like one. So that's, that's how I'm trying to do it for now. So, Jesse, in addition to being long familiar with your work, given your engagement at City Hall, you know, I also knew of you as um, as uh, an employee and support agent over at Nucci Space as well. Did you find that experience to be beneficial in kind of shedding light on a different aspect of Athens than you might see uh, if you were hanging out down in the chambers? Yeah, I think, you know, what was tough um, about kind of segueing out of new cheese to focus on this more full time is that that's probably the most I've ever felt like I was part of a family in my workplace. I think a lot of people say that in their workplace, but it really felt very true there. It's actually been cool to hear a lot of the departments in Clark County speak of that similarly. And it seems like it's similar, similarly genuine. Um, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I, you know, just to, I mean, why not just be, you know, fully real here? I have like a long history of struggling with depression and anxiety and, and mental health struggles is really what connected me to Nucci Space initially to try to get help. And then eventually I was volunteering and then I got a job the best way you can ever get a job probably, which is to be asked to get, if you want to get paid for the thing you're doing for free. Um, and, uh, and seeing 
on a more intimate level, just how many people in the community struggle and really investing that much more in like on the nonprofit side of things, like getting a stronger grasp of how mental health service can look and how under-resourced we are in that regard. Um, I think it just added like more layers and more details to the very human components of these kind of like abstract data level ideas, you know, these conversations we have around like inequality or poverty or healthcare or whatever. Um, but like on a deeply human level, uh, most everyone's experienced being depressed at some point, And there's a large number of people that experience it chronically. Um, and I think uh, the, the gentleness and the flexibility that's required to see each other's humanity, even when we're engaged in a really like tumultuous or abrasive context, uh, I think translates well to thinking about how we approach political struggles too. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's the, hopefully that answers your question well enough. <laughs> no, no, that's good. I, I, I absolutely see the parallel. Uh, you know, I, I think all the time and, and speak openly about the skills that I learned in working first with seventh graders and, and later eighth graders, and high school kids that, you know, have some level of translation to working with you know, either the public at large or kind of in other group settings, you know, that tolerance and patience and kind of willingness to um, accept that understanding unfolds over time, that, that, that it doesn't land on you all at once. Um, no, I, I definitely see those connections you mentioned too. So both of you talked about some specific topical areas, you know, Jesse, you about wanting to see reduced inequality and, and wealth gap closure, you know, wanting to see a, a warm and welcoming community. Carol, you know, your conversation about uh, your time at Athens Tech and what a view shed that provided into the breadth of needs of the community. And certainly among those is the physical connectivity of our infrastructure and also the uh, sustainability and cleanliness of our power generation. So the the point I often make to people if they're thinking about running for office is that, you know, you, you come with these cornerstones in mind, you know, these um, these foundations for your belief system and, and for your work, and you don't lose those, but certainly what you do find in the positions that you're now in is that there's all this other volume of stuff. And, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that experience just in this last several months for, for each of you to think, not only am I working upon these things that are deeply personal or you know have embraced commitments in me, but water and sewer line connections or, you know, you name it. So, K Carol, have you have you thought about that in the midst of this last many months? Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'll pick up on a, a word that Jesse was using, um, gentleness. Uh, there's a there's a you have <laughs> I think I'll I'll make this make this talk to myself right now because I need to give myself some gentleness here um, in terms of accepting the, that there's, you can do what you can do and you can keep doing it and there's always more to do. Um, and and that can sometimes be a little overwhelming. Um, there's so much to learn about. Uh, there's so many different areas to work on. Uh, you know, Jesse talk, talks and there's a lot of talk about criminal justice reform. And I'll tell you, that was actually one of the issues that really uh, really got me, you know, upset from the beginning when I was looking at the new jail and, and had a, a like a walk through the jail, the old jail, and and just really experience what was happening for so many people. But it's it's just like there's so many issues to work on. It's like I have to be able to accept that I'm going to be able to do what I can do, push what I can do, but then I got to have some hours to sleep and take care of myself. There's just, and I, and I think I'm bringing that from my work at Athens Tech as well. Um, and I think I might've had a conversation with you about that, Kelly, but there's like, I could always, there's always more to do. There's always and always more to do. Um, and I could, and I have to respect the limits of my own capacity as a human being um, to be able to do this work well, um, because if I'm getting down on myself for all that I can't do, that's going to keep me from doing the work that I can do. Um, what I'm enjoying is like learning about so, 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 so much. But again, I could spend all my time working on like understanding infrastructure. Uh, 
I could spend a lot more time understanding zoning and clearing and environmental issues. There's so much there. So there's a, there's a gentleness I have to allow myself. Um, and I hope I'll follow my own advice today as I think about this comment um, and response. No, I, I, I think that's wise to be already considering that, uh, you know, this early in the job, because there is an overwhelming nature of it. The, the, the cup is always overflowing with work opportunity and new learning opportunity. I mean, I'll share after this conversation, I'm going to pick up my son and then I'm going to put on some dirty shorts and go outside and pull privet out of my yard because it's a gorgeous day. And I realize if I spend a couple hours doing that, I'm, I'm going to be like a more functional person for the rest of the week. So, mm-hmm. you know, that that life work balance and you, you hear about mm-hmm. this, obviously, throughout society and professional conversation these days. But 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 that is especially true in this work that is so weighty um, and, and so voluminous. Um, Jesse, for you, what's been striking about sort of the nature of the breadth of things that you've got to be familiar with on the commission end? Sure. Yeah. And and I think you also spoke to infrastructure. So I'd love to touch upon that a little bit too. But yeah, there's certainly no, I love what Carol is saying. There's no end to the bottomless well, just the, the limitless rabbit hole you can tumble down of things that you want to try to work toward. And we all have our limited capacities. And so I think it's humbling to realize that day in and day out. Um, and that we like really can't carry all of it. Right. So, how, and, and we are tasked, I mean, the, it's been deeply educational to me to demystify even further how our local government is structured and just how much is going on. You know, thousands of employees and dozens of departments. And those are the folks who are really getting stuff done. You know, we're, people are looking at us more, but I'm not the one out there actually filling the pothole or plugging the numbers into the spreadsheet, you know, or, or doing the graphic design on the, the marketing materials, you know, that's really like the, the many people we have working for the government. So really trying to um, understand well enough the, the enough of the details of those folks' jobs to then make informed decisions about the, the meta level things that guide how they do them is, is certainly um, something I feel like we'll continue to always learn about, especially as things change. But when it comes to infrastructure, um, I think a lot about pipes, man. Like I, uh, a lot of what I think really attracts me to local level government is that it's a level of infrastructure that's actually really complex, um, insanely complex. If we think about the course of human history, it's just you know everything's scaled up so much in the last century that we might forget, you know. But the feat of having clean water to drink and and having functional sewer. Um, having a waste management system that works um, really as well as ours does. We've also got like a recycling facility that keeps the materials local and turns many of them into the same thing again instead of down cycling and stuff um, is really incredible. And I think it becomes easy to take those things for granted. You know, it's always easy to take for granted the stuff that's already working and want to see what's going to come next. But we're, we're sitting on a massive amount of infrastructure, a lot of which is aging out. And so we have these like old you know, storm storm sewer pipes and, and sewer sewer pipes that need replacing. And it's incredibly labor intensive to dig up the ground and put the pipe in. And of course, you, you know, to cut off the flows of the stuff that's usually going through them to put the new pipe in, like that's actually in- extremely complicated and expensive. Um, and uh, it reminds me of when I was, working on, you know, Tim ran for mayor back in the day, and we had kind of modeled it after a few um, a few socialist campaigns around the country, and one of them was Lumumba. There's, Lumumba's son is now the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, but his dad, who was this Black Panther lawyer, was, uh, was elected mayor and then kind of died mysteriously, actually. But um, I remember reading this interview with him. He has, you know, he'd been working with the Black Panthers for years and all these big, big ideas, but just the infrastructure of Jackson was in total disrepair. And he was like, so yeah, we're just going to see how this translates to sidewalks and sewers. And it kind of reminds me of that old adage about like sewer socialism and like really, you know, so much of how we build equality um, is providing these basic needs to everyone. Um, But then also we can't take for granted the need 
the the great amount of work that goes into maintaining that base level before we can build upon it. So, um, I think about this photograph that's in the King Center in Atlanta that some viewers and listeners may have seen, and it probably was from mid twentieth century. And there were people living in what were effectively sharecropper shacks, probably within four miles of downtown Atlanta. And you see these shacks in the foreground, you know, you you assume no water and no sewer. And then you see these glistening mid 20th century concrete and steel towers being erected in the background. And it's it, it always reminds me of. The importance of closing disparities, um, but in some ways, like the recency of people's consciousness about closing disparities, um, you know, and and just thinking every day, I think, as all of us do as policymakers, that it's not right to be in a world where there is just this vast gulf among human beings, same flesh and blood. Uh, you, you mentioned a word a couple minutes ago, Jesse, and I'm interested in both your perspectives on this. And I think you talked about demystifying the government. And um, it can be hard, and I'll say 15 years into elected public life and you know, more than 20 years into public sector work, you know, sometimes you get so uh, embroiled in the work that you just expect that things are the way they are. And then I I find it necessary to take a step back to realize, well, maybe not everybody understands how we got to where we are or how some of the structural underpinnings, you know, that are even sort of positive attributes, you know, that produce the the elements you talked about a couple of minutes ago, Jesse, got to where they are. Have, Have you recognized some opportunity, both of you, to have to bridge the gap for the public between the broad public understanding and your now growing understanding of how this local government operates. Yeah, I'll I'll go in there first and and respond because I just uh, you know hit the send button on my newsletter um, last night and I'm I'm following the uh, following the footsteps of previous District Eight uh, Commissioner Andy Harrod with my own newsletter and putting my own twist on it and of course I spent a lot of time teaching English which was really teaching writing and communicating and exactly the kind of communicating I'm doing. So it's like every month I'm thinking about how I can get information out to people and explain it in a way that makes sense to them who are not immersed in this every day. Um, and, And it's a good reminder of what people know and don't know in the background. Um, And so I feel like that's, and, and maybe that's one of the, my roles is sharing this information with my constituents and getting out there in different ways. Um, and, and that's, that's a challenge. I mean, I kind of feel like I could be, I could just do that full time as well. Um, I went to one of the neighborhood leaders at a resource fair uh, last week uh, and I was there and signing people up for my newsletter. And, you know, my goal is to make it readable, to make it relevant and to make it educate people about different issues. Um, and, And so I'm sort of thinking through that framework a lot. And again, I feel like that's one of the things I'm, I'm well positioned to do, um, because I know my strengths as a teacher uh, in terms of explaining things to different people and at different levels. Um, and so I feel like that's a, like an incredible opportunity I have to make the government a little bit more transparent. I was already thinking uh, that I, I will focus my next one on the budget, uh, which will be a great opportunity for me uh, to actually translate what I'm learning about the budget into something that makes sense to the average person out there um, in a way that makes it relevant to them where their tax money is going and thinking about who knows what. I mean, I think like, for example, if we pay our taxes or the taxes are paid and one doesn't realize the amount of money that goes to our school district, for example. Um, So there's so many different areas that people don't, that that it be that I can use this position to sort of help people understand what's going on because I think it's fascinating. Jesse and I are both in this situation where uh, we both are like, this is like a candy store. We love it. You know, we're learning all this stuff, policy, a new policy, a new department, 
Um, and so we can sort of, uh, you know, go out and spread that, that, that joy and passion about the local government and what we do here. Jesse, for you, I mean, do you, do you similarly want to be able to bring some new understanding to the, the public? And, 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 and what are those pieces that you recognize already you want to be able to help pull the curtain back on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I like that you said pull the curtain. I was in this, um, I think I shared with you all, it might have been before we were live, that I was in this economic development class and I felt like I was peeking behind the curtains that were in a room that I'd never previously entered, you know? So it's like getting to be on the commission, I've kind of walked into this room and I sort of knew what was in that room, but now I'm seeing all these other things and it's like, wow. Um, so I, I really view this role as being that bridge, as you put it. Uh, I often use the term facilitator, that like our job is largely to facilitate a dialogue between community members with each other, with staff, you know, to, to try to share power. Um, and I, I take that very seriously. I think that like our our role is to share out the power we have. And of course, giving people decision making power is only as effective as or is effective in direct proportion to how much they understand the decisions they're making, right? So there's so much detail that we're kind of dealing with. And, you know, to some degree, we're elected to do this job so that people don't have to worry about all that minutia. Um, but I also think it's important for us to be continually finding ways to be proactively engaged in the conversation because we never know exactly which bits of minutia people will really care about. And then when they do, to really maintain an openness and an inclusive approach to that instead of um, kind of saying like, oh, no, we got this or like, you know, girding against it. Um, and so I, I guess that speaks to being both like responsive to when people reach out to us and also proactive. Carol talked about the newsletters my Catholic upbringing is still like self-flagellating that I haven't brought mine back yet, um, but I, I deeply committed to doing so. I keep saying, you know, tomorrow you, it's going to happen, you though. You have town halls uh, planned already, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling guilty about that. There you go. So, you know, we're both we're both working on it, but the town uh, halls is another one. I'll, I'll assign the appropriate number of Hail Marys and Our Fathers <laughs> at the conclusion of this gathering. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. He, that's what I think that's Catholic what you're here for, mostly. Call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I guess the last component of this, I would say, is like how we draft our policies, both the method that we use in the drafting of those policies, but also writing them in a way that that formally provides avenues to not only access the, the process for people to provide input on the budget or in the way that that policy evolves over time with, say, our 100% renewable goals or uh, the way that we approach the Linentown resolution, really, they approach the Linentown resolution, and hopefully we'll honor that, you know. Um, and uh, and then, like, really empowering folks, not just with the knowledge, but also to give people that decision-making power. And to some degree, you know, being a representative democracy, we can always only take that so far. And that's where I think it's just important for us as humans to maintain that openness and to really be moved when people are compelling us to move. Um, yeah. So um, just in the last few minutes as we wrap and, and, and thinking about what we are compelled to move on, uh, just like each of you to reflect for a few minutes on those things that you believe not only are we compelled to move on, but we're well poised to put into place in the next few years here in Athens. And so, Carol, I'll, uh, I'll begin with you and then close with Jesse. What, what do you firmly in your understanding now know we can do here uh, to, to advance the cause of a better place to live for Athens. Yeah, this this isn't just the introduction, Kelly. We don't have a couple of hours for this discussion. <laughs> um, uh, well, I, I, it's actually, I feel really, um, again, fortunate because I think uh, we're in a place with the commission as it is and with our new administration in uh, Washington where um, we have some opportunities to do a whole lot of things together. Um, we, you know, we may have our differences as a commission sometimes, but I think basically we're um, on a similar, at a similar place on the political spectrum to move a lot of things forward. Um, I'd say that as a, you know, as a commissioner, one of the things I just want, what we were talking about before was, you know, your sort of infrastructure and the differences between the haves and the have nots. And I've lived a very middle class life. And I really feel that I've had this great life here in Athens. And there are so many people who struggle in different ways that just getting people to a place 
um, not just getting placed, but giving people more opportunities to do that um, is what, what we can accomplish. So we have a lot of money coming now with the American Rescue Plan. Hopefully we'll be able to help people who are in, in need to have better housing, to have better food security, to have better, uh, you know, health care opportunities. I think that's a really important um, role that we have. But again, we have to realize that it's somewhat limited in what we can do locally. Um, I, of course, in terms of climate change and the transition, we are so incredibly well poised here to do a lot in the next four years because we've done the we've done the the, the work so far getting 100% renewable um, resolution passed last year and then working on this plan. We have money from our SPLOS project for that, but then we're also poised to just already have this plan to apply for grants on a, on a federal level for the kind of plans that um, President Biden is, is working on. Um, and so I think we have a lot of opportunities in those areas that we can take advantage. Um, one of the things that I've learned that I'm really glad is part of the conversation, like you were saying before, we're not 20 years, even 20 years ago, there might have been something in me that knew it, but it wasn't part of the public conversation, the focus on equity, the focus on when we're spending these big amount of monies to make sure that we're not, that we're we're empowering, that we're addressing the needs of the less well off right away forefront in a very deliberate way. Um, and I'm so glad that we can have those conversations. That's the norm now, that's wonderful. Um, so I'm, I'm excited what we can do there and then to have in our criminal justice system as well. And I'm sure Jesse will address this, but having our new district attorney in place, um, you know, really someone who's, re and, and our new sheriff, really rethinking what we're doing with criminal justice. Back in 2005, when we were building this new jail, and we were make, getting a jail uh, that would be able to have a thousand beds in it. And I thought, whoa, that's sort of crazy for our community to be looking uh, of just barely over a hundred thousand to be looking at building, putting all this money into a place that can keep and lock up 1% of our population. Um, it seems like we're going in another direction and I'm so like really glad to be part of that direction now. Um, so. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we're I think there's an incredible amount that we can do in the next couple of years um, if we work together. Glad to see it unfolding. Jesse, for you, what are a handful of the tangible outcomes that you anticipate seeing in the years in a couple of years ahead? Yeah, um, Carol touched upon a good bit of them, but I'll, I'll give my own spicy list here, I guess. Um, you know, I one thing that I, I, I like to use as kind of undergirding how I imagine transforming our community. You know, I, I kind of campaign on this idea of like, let's transform Athens. Well, what do I mean by that? I think we transform ourselves in the process and we, as we transform the community. And I think a healthcare lens is a really good way to see that. And, you know, if COVID has taught us, and COVID's taught us a lot of things, I think, but uh, it's really made that much more space for us to have that conversation, which I think was already happening a lot in the social work world. Um, I think like the Athens Wellbeing Project and Envision Athens and the way we're seeing their work dovetail now is going to give us kind of that data and social infrastructure to be able to do this. And so more obvious healthcare things would be, you know, adding some of that like more mental and dental healthcare to our clinics that we're helping fund and things like that. I'm, I'm encouraged about how there seems to be a lot of consensus on the commission about that. Um, really in general, just backing up, I think a lot of why I really believe in this town and the local government is that I really believe in the, the people on this body um, sharing enough of a vision that I really think we can make some, some real big things happen. Um, and a, a lot of that is thanks to you being in the mayor's seat and, and many of the folks we have on, on the commission, I think really sharing an, a passion for what can happen. Um, living wages is a big one. I mean, as you all know, and probably many people watching, um, and so I, I'm hopeful, you know, we got the, the budget is going to be the main topic of discussion for the next month. And I'm really hopeful that we're going to raise our wage floor and also look at other ways that we can prioritize uh, living wages and building up employer capacity to pay their employees better um, through other policies and approaches to our economic development department. Certainly sustainability um, and 
I, I mean, I think Carol can cover the sustainability goals plenty well, but I'm, I'm very excited for what we can do there. Um, taking a, rep, a reparational approach to racial justice. I think that we've made some real strides in telling the story that needs to be told. You know, we can't heal from a story that we're not even acknowledging. Um, but now, you know, we've got to start putting some of the investment that aligns with that. And I'm really encouraged that this body's going to do that as well. Uh, part of that relates to housing. Um, and so, you know, we've talked to, about the housing first initiatives and trying to take an approach to homeless services that's providing more of the operational funding that's needed to then also expand the amount of beds that are available to meet that need. And that's kind of a proven way of, of helping folks who are most in need. But then also on the policy side of things, looking at our our zoning and planning policies and saying, you know, how can we build in some more of that inclusionary zoning? So the, the working group that Commissioners Parker and Denson are on that you set up um, in response to the charge that you gave the planning commission, I'm really excited to see we're getting kind of deep in the weeds here, maybe, but like a lot of those policies, I think, are going to make a real difference, even though the benefit they yield isn't like immediately obvious. Um, and I really hope that a tenant's rights component will get built into more of what we're doing as well. But we've already seen that play out, even just with how we approach the neighborhood traffic management plan, you know, and building in more avenues for tenants to be empowered in that process. And then the last thing, yeah, I, I'm not wearing this shirt by accident. So, you know, public safety to me is is really important and I think Carol is speaking to our new DA and our new sheriff. Uh, we have some really great judges in this community. I've had really, really encouraging conversations with all those folks and many people in our community. And while you know most of the folks, you know our, our DA and many of our judges are keen to point out that they are not abolitionists, I still think that a lot of our goals, especially if we think of what we can accomplish in the next five years, uh, very much align in terms of putting you know far fewer people in jail and treating people with more humanity. And so I'm really excited to see what we can do with the way that we approach policing and public safety in our community to to change that as well. Well, I'm I'm grateful for the willingness on both of your parts to to be part of this work. Uh, I think as you've noted at several points, it is ongoing work. Uh, it, it's never done. And, you know, while it may take longer for some things to come to fruition than we would like, we know if we're not in the workshop on it, it it's never going to come to fruition. So, um, thank you both for your presence, your friendship, your time here on the commission and your time here on Community Conversation this afternoon. Um, Athens, everybody have a great month and we will see you in May. Hi, Athens. Thanks. Bye, Athens. Thank you, Kelly.